brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Welcome to this conversation on this Sud segment. It's a best of 2013 conversation on the best IPAs for 2013. Joining me for this conversation is good old boy John. Hello, everybody. You know, uh, we've probably had a conversation around IPAs at least probably, you know, a dozen times. At least. You know, and, you know, I I guess the reason why... uh, having this discussion about the best IPAs in 2013 was definitely some of the statistics around the um, uh, competition at GABF and the numbers and the disparity of style, uh, you know, entries in that, that (laughs) kind of drew me in to say, we should really just talk about this one beer. (laughs) And even some of the other beer competitions that, you you know, we've noticed even in the Mm homebrew environment, it's still an incredibly popular style as well. Everybody brews an IPA. Everybody likes an IPA. And um, <clears throat> whether it be commercial or, or, or homebrew, everybody does an IPA. So it is an extremely popular style. Um, you know, I run the competition for the, the local homebrew club, the Music, Music City Brewers. And that is every single year, it is, it is at least tied for... Uh, the biggest category that we have, and it's usually tied with a category that is uh, American ales, which is American pales, American browns, styles that are a lot of those beers are basically IPAs. They just entered in the wrong category. Yep. So, well, it's just shooting in multiple directions, you know, <laughs> to try to hit something. You know, is what what usually that amounts to. But you know, so we, uh, I really, uh, I really put it. To all of our uh, hosts, you know that have been on this year, to say what was your favorite IPA this year, and I enjoyed thinking about this as much as I'm probably going to enjoy talking about it because I really I was kind of hauling back and man, I've just had so many great beers and exactly. So I look forward to, to chatting about at least you know some of my thought process through it. But I know we we both went to one event that definitely <laughs> uh, I, I thought really captured. Um, you know the conversation, uh, as well as just I think a lot of the challenges around making this beer and making mm-hmm. it so exceptionally as well. So, John, what's your favorite IPA for 2013? My favorite IPA, um, also basically the number one beer. If you, I'm putting air quotes up right now, the number one beer in America right now, I guess, is uh, the Heady Topper from the Alchemist Brewery in Vermont. Hmm. Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think that's a lot of uh, people really elevate this beer, you know, uh, quite exceptionally. And we actually got to meet uh, the brewer and chat yeah. with him at length, and uh, I think really get to know what not just what goes into the beer itself, mm-hmm. but I think a lot more about the person, you know, behind the beer. Exactly. Um, which I actually enjoyed that conversation as much as I did Loved the beer it. itself. Yeah. Um, but so what was it about Hetty Topper that really, the the beer itself that really did it for you? Um, I, I'm a guy who likes IPAs. I don't like bitter IPAs, though. I don't like overly bitter IPAs. I like beers that have a ton of flavor and a ton of hop character. A um, ton of aroma, and this beer couldn't have been more spot on. Now, we did get the benefit of, uh, I believe it was canned on a Tuesday, <laughs> and we drank it on a Friday following that Tuesday. So it was as fresh as it's ever going to get. Um, versus, you know, other than being coming straight off the fermenter line, um, but it was. I've never had a beer that tasted that fresh. Um, it wasn't vegetal. You could tell there were a ton of hops in this beer. Uh, oddly enough, though, based on the conversation uh, that we had with uh, with John Kimmick, the the brewer at, at the Alchemist, there's not a single hop 
that goes into the boil in this in that beer. Um, he uses a hop extract uh, as the bittering uh, component of it, and then everything else is like in the whirlpool right before cooling. And I can't imagine the amount of hops he has to throw in at that point to get that amount of flavor and aroma. Uh, I think the hop stands something like an hour because of the amount of whirlpool and cooling he has to go mm-hmm. through. But um, it, it's just a fabulous beer, and I had never had it before. Um, uh, the Music City Brew Off dinner uh, guest speaker presentation. Um, and like I said, the conversation with Kimmick was was enlightening. He he mm-hmm. basically walked us through how to brew this beer without giving us the ingredients, but you felt like he gave you everything you needed to be able to brew, if not Hetty Topper, a Just beer a good very beer. similar to yeah. it. Very good tips on, on how to brew a really good IPA. Um, down to you know why he uses pellet hops versus whole leaf hops, um, his whole philosophy, and I mean the fact that he's a he's a guy who wants to be as green as possible. He wants to you know, uh, you know save his runoff water uh, and 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 try to recapture as much as he can, recapturing CO two from the fermenters to be able to carbonate the beers later on. Um, it's just an incredible story. Um, and a really nice guy. I mean, he was really was about as down to earth as you could be for a brewery. Uh, I, really, I couldn't say enough good things about. Yeah, him. I mean, I've, I've just really amazing. It was a really good. And, and I haven't met very many brewers who were real, you know, not nice people. Um, but the, this guy seemed to be on the upper end of all of that. Uh, of all of those people. So, yeah. just just a great beer, great brewery. You know, I mean, they they have <laughs> they make as much beer. They basically make it. What is it? I, I think he makes. Uh, not enough. Not enough, but I think it's yeah. It's like he he has sixty barrels a day. I think is what they try to brew on a fifteen barrel system. It's basically not even constantly burning in his uh, yeah demand. And, he's, and he sells out before like yeah. Sunday. He's pretty much gone by Sunday, and that's between distributors and in 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 house sales. Which by the way. Uh, stopped apparently right yep. after the the thing. We, I was a little bit upset that we didn't get at least we like didn't a little. Get to hear we didn't get a uh, heads hint, up about it yeah. or anything. He, he kind of kept that a secret, and then yeah, and I would have called somebody. And said, "Hey, drive over there, man." It was quite <laughs> literally like like Monday or Tuesday after, after the event. Yeah. They basically shut down the retail. So, uh, but again, back to the beer. Really great beer. I mean, you will never taste and it, the. It's just the I've never had a beer that smelled that way, that tasted that way. So I was about to ask you. So was it the whole experience of opening the can and just the aroma alone that blew you away, or was it just the flavor of the beer? You know, even after that kind of you know. I think it was a little bit of both. I mean, I do I do think cans are kind of the revolution of the future. For and it sounds weird to say the revolution of the future, but for craft brewers, there are really not that many craft it's brewers. A retro that have, revolution. That have, exactly. Uh, it, it's a, it's the perfect container for a beer. It's light proof. It's you know uh, oxygen proof. Um, you you can't have a better packaging unit um, for a beer, especially one like uh, a heady topper that needs that. Uh, you know, uh, it needs to stay away from light. It needs to stay away from oxygen to retain all of that flavor. And I can say this: I've had it. Uh, at three days old, I had it at two weeks old, and I've had it at a month and a half old, and it was absolutely fabulous every single time. And there's really not much change mm. from the fresh beer to the month old beer. I mean, it I'm, really isn't. I'm taking note of the fact that you did not call me three days after the fact, <laughs> two months after the fact, and three months after the fact to come yeah. and enjoy it with you. Yeah. That's what I heard. Benef- <laughs> benefits of being the organizer of a particular event is, is uh, you get to take home the, air quotes, leftovers. I'm, I'm aware uh, of that. <laughs> so it, that's always a bonus. Mm. Well, you know, I I was uh, I got to enjoy Hetty Topper this year as well, and um, you know, uh, I would have to say the aroma uh, outstripped the beer uh, for me. Um, you know, and and there were several beers that I had that you know have been like that, where just the aroma itself is just really quite extraordinary, actually better than the beer itself, mm-hmm. and. You know, um, so I did not pick Hattie Topper. <laughs> but I don't think that that has anything to do directly with necessarily the quality characteristic. I think that there were a couple of other things that were playing in, you know, to thinking about specifically how would I name the best IPA for one year. And I think there were a couple of other things playing through my head. Um, absolutely, the quality of the beer is at the top. Uh, but I think the... Uh, distribution and availability 
mm-hmm. you know, of the beer. Um, I think consistent quality, mm-hmm. um, you know, is another thing that uh, had to play into it. Affordability mm-hmm. and approachability, you know, to uh, that beer as well. I didn't really draw a whole lot of distinction between Imperials and, you know, regular IPAs. Um, Because I think that, you know... The line is so blurred. I was about to say, it it really has become so blurred, you know, here that... uh, uh, I was thinking, you know, uh, about a beer ad recently from uh, Captain Lawrence, their Mm -hmm. Golden Delicious. uh, uh, And both their... uh, And I had both their Imperial as well as just their regular style, you know, IPA side by side. And I was like... Really, I mean, what was the difference at the end of the day? One had maybe a little more alcohol. That was yep. about it, you know. Probably. Yeah. Um, Slightly bigger grain bill and, and maybe it. a few more hops here and there. And that's about yeah. it. But anyway, back to uh, Hetty Topper. You know, I think that uh, uh, I really, I thought it was a great beer. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, but there was one beer that I would probably pick for my IPA. For 2013, for good old boy Mike, it's going to be Six Point Resin. Mm. Um, Very good beer also. I am telling you. You know, so I would say that the perennial favorite I have in this category is Ben Dogfish, a Mm -hmm. 90-minute IPA, for a long time. And I really didn't think there would be anything that would challenge the quality of that beer uh, and the consistency of it until I had several other things this year that I thought, hmm, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, uh, uh, if you don't know, uh, Six Point is uh, based out of Brooklyn, New York, um, and they this is one of their uh, perennial, uh, it, there's high availability of this. There's going to be a new beer that's going to be introduced uh, here in 2014 as well. That is going to be able to elevate uh, resin itself. You know, some of the flavor characteristics, you know, around resin is, I call it the the West Coast funk for the East Coast guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there uh, so many of the West Coast style IPAs really have such a heavy pine mm-hmm. uh, floral quality to them. Um, it, at times, it 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 really kind of overwhelms my palate, and I think that's. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably another beer that I had that was you know very close here in the running was First and Walker's Double Jack. Yeah, great, really great really IPA. I mean, I'm talking just like half of a hair, you know, difference in saying you know one over the other. I mean, I really enjoy uh, oh, Double and by Jack. By the way, we were we were very close to having Brindleson, uh, the brewer at Firestone Walker, uh, be the speaker at uh, this year's. As much as I, I hate to say it, we were, Brindleson was our first choice. Uh, and, and, and and the yeah he was he was somewhere else and then uh, uh, we were able to get kind of Kimmich as a backup. I, I'm not going to complain at all because he brought a, a ton of uh, heady with him and and uh, well uh, he was a great speaker too so uh, and yeah uh, and I would have enjoyed even seeing the two of them you know in oh, a room yeah. together wow how amazing that would be I mean because I love that Brindleson's a, a hop. He is. He's a nut. He understands hop profiles and the way different hops meld together. He, and stuff. I think he spends more time actually chasing uh, varieties of hops than he does actually making beer. I think he does, too. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, and I think that's part of what it really comes down to uh, in really making a, a top-quality you know, IPA. The other IPA that uh, was you know somewhere there in my top three was uh, Fatheads. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, IPA I had that for the well. first time this year. It's yeah. really, really good. Really great beer, um, and I had it for the first time, you know, probably about five or six weeks ago, and I, I was really surprised, you know, how uh, how strong, you know, the quality of that was as well. And man, I, just to stack all four of those beers, you know, side by side of each other, put resin there, you know, uh, double jack, uh, fed heads, and, and ninety minute IPA, kind of all right there together. It's like no matter what you grab, you're wow. right. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's like good, great. Great, super great. Yeah. I think part of what me had to choose resin, you know, over some of these others is, I don't know, there is just some, there is something about that hop variety uh, that they are choosing for that that just moves it across the finish line yeah. for me. And I, I can't, I can't describe it, you know, really well here on the radio. It's just, um, 
it's uh, even though the IBUs are running probably a hundred plus, you know, for that beer. I don't really think of that as the most bitter hop bomb no, that I've had by not. any. And, and to me, the best beers aren't, or the best IPAs aren't bitter messes, yeah. as I like to call them. I think the best beers are the ones that smell great, they taste great, and they don't overwhelm your palate with with bitterness. Um, you are able to taste the hops and taste that that you know the quality in in that hop character. Well, so you know that's. Uh, I, I like some of the distribution model, you know, around mm-hmm. as well. And I think what's very interesting, um, so I wanted to mention good old boy Dave's uh, choice for top IPA is going to be Cigar City's High Lie, yep. which I've had that. I, I, have you had the I've had one? the High Lie, yeah. Um, so the first time I had High Lie was actually on draft. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was actually in Ybor City. I was not at the brewery. It was in another place uh, in Ybor City in Tampa. And... Um, I actually had a full flight of, you know, several Cigar City, you know, beers. I probably had, I don't know, eight or nine, you know, in that flight. Um, you know, I, I remember not walking away with an incredibly, you know, favorable feeling, you know, about the whole flight. Mm-hmm. But that but that IPA, the highlight, definitely, I said, of the bunch, that's it. I yeah. thought it was really good. There was something uh, very earthy, yeah. you know, about that particular uh, IPA that, I, and it was a it was a pleasant earthy, yeah, uh, you know, it wasn't a, like an, that overwhelming English yeah. character. It just it kind of adds a little bit of balance to it. I think there there's a little more uh, to me. It has a little more uh, I want to say grassiness, but not a ton. And I don't know if that's the level of hops or the, even the kind of hops they're using. Maybe they're using more whole leaf versus pellet. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I, that is definitely a beer I, I really thought that they had down pat, yeah. you know, very easily. Absolutely. And so, you know, definitely thinking about all of those beers that, you know, I had experienced in the market that um, I guess the one very interesting characteristic about all these is they're all distributed in cans. <laughs> all the good ones, yeah, you can get them in cans. Yeah. 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 Uh, and... I mean, you can get them on. You can get at least the last two on tap. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know that I've ever seen Eddie Topper on no, tap. No, no. Um, but maybe at I don't, I don't know if their brewery has anything on. They do growler fills. That's they it. used to do growler fills. But they don't distribute. But in they kegs. don't distribute in kegs. So no. yeah, it's, it, they can't brew enough of it to, <laughs> to fulfill the cans, much less the, the, any distributor. Well, issues. I don't know if that is a little bit of the secret of you know really having the. Uh, the ultimate, you know, IPA is, you know, changing the distribution, you know, model to a can versus a bottle. I, I wonder if that's it. I think the the can. I know. I know a lot of people are, are at least trying it. I know even locally, there's there's a a mobile canning line uh, that goes around and they they keep up with you know all your your inventory. I think the the problem with canning, at least what from what I've heard from different brewers, is that that uh, the inventory of cans you have to keep on hand are more difficult to deal with than the bottles you have to keep up with um i I don't know if that's because you know the boxes are more difficult the cans are are more fragile or whatever but um and the canning lines tend to be around a million dollars or so i know even yazoo locally had had at least contemplated um buying a canning line at some point uh but but didn't feel it was cost effective i guess um for, for what they were planning on doing. so, um, But there is a mobile canning line that goes around. I know there's one in uh, Denver. There's one in uh, North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and there's apparently well, there's been one locally because there's uh, at least one brewery locally has canned some beer. So. Well, if that moves Odell's, you know, to some other states beyond uh, where they're at, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for that. <laughs> I think it's a, an ingenious uh, uh, idea to have a mobile canning line. I mean, you, I agree. Th- these guys are able to, to keep up with the inventory of, of cans and have everything ready to go. They basically pull up. They unload the canning line they have all your your uh, inventory of uh, cans ready to go all you've got to do is have the beer ready to be canned yeah you know, and then just run a couple of hoses and exactly you know you're really just working about picking and packing you know exactly um, you know at that point so uh, you know i agree that uh, certainly for this uh, simplicity of the distribution model but i don't know what uh, what happened with really thinking why these really great IPAs are all have a common, you know, distribution, you know, in a can. It was definitely something that kind of, you know, I thought that was kind of an interesting observation, you know, that that happened to be the case. 
There are a lot of other great IPAs that are yeah. distributed in bottle. I mean, Dogfish I, is, you know, bottles only. So Yeah, I, th- I think in general, I think people are, are in the, the brewing industry, craft in particular, uh, is starting to figure out that, that cans are, that they're more cost, I don't, I don't know that they're more cost effective, I guess. Uh, they're, they're definitely more environmentally friendly, um, and they're uh, more easily recyclable, and they're a better container for beers that need to be, you know, um, it, honestly, it makes the beer more ageable. Uh, a glass bottle um, it doesn't keep out uh, air as efficiently, and it doesn't keep out light as efficiently. Even a, a brown bottle is going to let some light in, which ultimately spoils the beer over the long haul. Um, so uh, it makes them, uh, I'm going to smack the mic a few times. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it, it makes them more um, um, distributable, and, and and the the life of them, the, they're they're born on date and and whatnot, it makes it a much more uh, uh, of a long term deal. They, they're not, they don't have to be fresh to be good yeah. when they're in a can. Like I said, even even Kimmick even mentioned that in the the speech that we had, uh, yeah. that he felt like. Hetty was best about two weeks two, old. Yeah, I thought that was a rather yeah, like, interesting observation. Yeah, he thought it was perfect at two weeks old, two yeah. weeks after canning. He would he would drink them two weeks old, and and to me that's just I don't know. That's that's the way that's the way beer should be should be drank is is fresh and and as often as possible. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess the other part of this was the IBU rating. You know, on mm-hmm. all these beers was you know in a similar range. You know yeah. itself. So I think my question to you is: Do you think that you're the uh, the concept of a hot bomb is diminishing now? And do you think that we are going to see finally some sanity coming to play? Uh, I think in, people are realizing that bitterness doesn't translate to good IPAs. Yeah. Um, I think that some IB, IBUs are good, and I, I think um, there's a difference between calculated IBUs and actual IBUs. Um, I think that that um, you can throw as many hops as you want to in a beer. You can go dogfish head and throw as many hops, you know, ninety minutes uh, through a beer, and, and you're going to get a totally different, totally different profile than a beer that's hopped with an extract in the boil and all the beer, uh, all the hops in the uh, whirlpool and cooling area. Mm. Um, uh, but I, honestly, they're they're two different they're two different beers totally. Um, to me, the 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 wave of the future, if you want to call it that, is is IPAs with much more flavor and aroma rather than bitterness. Yeah. Um, I think that, that what people are trying to do is capture a drinker's nose before they ever have a chance to drink the beer. And there you go. The one thing I, I noticed about Topper was when you poured it, I mean, it says drink it from the can, and, and that's great and all, but there's nothing like pouring it into a glass and, and sticking, and sticking your, nose. your nose in it and just smelling it. Uh, I mean, it's... it's uh, Kimmick even said it. It's like you know, it's like smelling a fresh bag of weed or or whatever. It's that grassy awesomeness that you get from uh, a good freshly hopped beer. Mm. It's really really nice. Well, uh, I really enjoyed the conversation here about what we thought were the best IPAs at least of 2013, and exactly. and I, I really I look forward. To that. I think it's going to be a recurring conversation we're going to have at least for another two or three years before people kind of back I will off. be honest. I'm surprised we haven't mentioned um, Pliny at all in this conversation. And it's weird. I love Pliny the Elder. I've had eight-day-old Pliny. I know. And it's, to me, though, it's it's gotten to where it's almost not even an IPA anymore because of the way the style has moved, the it's, way it's transitioned. I know, and it's not for me uh, yeah. either. I mean, uh, I had a lot of Pliny this year as well. And, you know, it's a great beer. Don't get yeah. me wrong. I mean, I love I love Russian River, um, and you know definitely I would say Supplication is easily in my top ten you know beers this year. Uh, but yeah, Pliny just doesn't do it for me. Yeah. You know, it's it's, a, it's, it's an a, extremely drinkable beer. Yeah. And it's very good, but I, like I said, I don't know that it's necessarily in that top. You know, I, I think five. I think it's one of those things where I think the limited distribution model is outstripping the quality of the beer itself. You know, Could to be, some yeah. degree, the myth is is well, and I've heard I've heard it's much better on tap than it is in bottles, and and maybe that's the case. I've never had, actually had it on draft. So. Yeah, I've had it both ways. Um, I I probably I do prefer it, you know, on tap uh, versus in the bottle, uh, but. Even then, you know, it's just uh, it's, again, it's a great IPA. Yeah. I would say it's right on par with some of the other, you know, things we talked about. But um, definitely, uh, 
didn't probably hit the top three, you know, for me anyway. So. And I think it's like, I mean, Hetty and Pliny, but Pliny is the original Hetty. I mean, it was so hard to get on the East Coast for so many years. Yeah. Uh, and now Hetty's hard to get unless you're in Vermont specifically. You can't get it in that or you got somebody that can mule some for you. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, it's just really, really uh, a hard to get beer, mm-hmm. period. I mean, if you're not there the week they brew it, it's, it's almost impossible to find it. Well, great conversation again, John, and I always always love, you know, hearing where your head's at, you know, when, when it comes to talking about, especially Hop Bomb. Yep. I am talking to the original Hop God here, you know, uh, here in front of I'm not of the you. original. I'm, I'm a You're, you're going to take that title on by yourself. So, well, we'll see what 2014 brings in this category, yep. and we'll see if anything, anything changes a year from now, so... It'll be interesting. There's people are trying new techniques, new you know ways to hop beers, and uh, you know something else will pop up. There always is. There's always that one. I will say this: there is a uh, another brewery up in Vermont. The Hill Farmstead Breweries are brewing a lot of really interesting beers, including they range from sour beers to really really hop big hop bombs. So uh, a really interesting, very small model. You know, really small distribution. Very hard to get beers too. So, mm. well, John, thanks for joining me. Always great Thanks to have for having you. me. This good old boy, Mike. I'm going to ask you to keep on sipping. We are back for more discussion on the best of 2013, the best IPA we've had this last year. This is good old boy Mike. Joining me for this discussion again on this is good old boy Jim. Hello. Reverend Mark. Good to be with you. And good old boy Jonathan. Hello. Happy to be here. Thank you all for uh, joining us in this discussion uh, about the best IPA that you've had this last year. And I would say that this is definitely one of the most popular styles uh, that we've ever had. So uh, this style has become one of the most popular styles here in the U.S. Not that worthy of our discussion about the best one we've had uh, in the last year as well. So, uh, good old boy Jim, you've had lots of brew in the last 12 months. What is your best IPA? Well, I have, and although the funny thing is, is... This year, not there was no plan to this. I just, as I would go to different restaurants and different places and different breweries, and, and I, for whatever reason, started gravitating away from trying every IPA known to man, even though they're becoming more and more ubiquitous and they're out there everywhere. Adverse to the hop guy. Well, no, it's just that um, after a while, I, you know, tried something else. And um, But I would say... Um, I would bring it all the way back to Nashville for mine, which was uh, Yazoo's Imperial 10-Year IPA, which is taking IPA and then running it all the way back through IPA again, because by the time they get done, it is it is practically uh, tongue-numbing in mm-hmm. the amount of, of hops that's in there. It just is up there really, really high. So, uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with Yazoo Brewing, it is a brewery based in Nashville, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Regional distribution for Yazoo uh, throughout Tennessee and the Mid-South area. So, Alabama, I think they're in Georgia now. Um, And uh, they also have a bottling line as well that they uh, distribute in bottles as well as on tap. So, the 10th anniversary was uh, something that they did um, well, in a was, very short I, run. But yeah, they it was did called bottle 10 it. Year yeah. IPA. So, I mean, it's a, a double, what do they call it? Double, double IPA. Double yeah. IPA. And it is available in bottles and on tap. Uh, and uh, great beer. Why? Uh, so, what were, were there any other choices that you had behind that that you were thinking about that it was like, wow, you know? Well, okay. I, you know, I, I um, going back to Yazoo, I think every time I go in there, if I have two or three beers, I say that I laid off of them, but I'm going to at least try every hot project that they have, which are just numbered. So they mm-hmm. really, they're not, they're not bottled. They're not available. Um, and then beyond that, um, I really can't say that I went out there and tried a lot of, of uh, IPAs this year. Well, it's a continuous project they do at uh, Yazoo, the Hot Project. um, They're on 46. Yeah, so every, I think every particular batch, they basically number it off and they uh, change the the mix of hops that they have, you know, um, for each particular batch. And 
Some have been really, really good, and some have been just kind of okay and pedestrian. There have been a few offensive ones, you know, that have <laughs> definitely got under my nose and, and, you know, I didn't care for. But the IPA is definitely a perennial uh, beer that they have, and then they uh, made the double IPA as mm-hmm. their anniversary. So great choice. Uh, super beer. Uh, Reverend Mark, how about it? You definitely had lots of IPA this year, didn't you? Well, it, we could... Sp- spend a couple of episodes just talking about um, the Great American Beer Festival. But before we get there, uh, just to kind of double back with local beer, favorite beer, because I think especially um, your hoppy beers that uh, you want to get the full range of not only the, the bittering, but the the, uh, the aroma, uh, <clears throat> fresh and local is the key. So I would say another one of my favorite local IPAs is Blackstone's Atom Bomb. Unfortunately, you can't get it on tap, so I think it would be even better, and I actually have, have, it ser- have had it served uh, off of one of their holding tanks in their you know new facility uh, here in Nashville. Uh, so that's definitely one that I would put as, as one of my favorites in terms of local. Hmm. Um, but you've definitely had IPAs all over the country and even outside you know the U.S. as well. I'm sure that this, this was a difficult, uh, you know, choice for me. Uh, but I'm curious, what was even in your top three, or what was your top pick? Well, I would think at uh, in Denver, uh, the uh, certainly the uh, Pliny the Elder on tap, which I had never had until then, was just beyond description. Mm. Russian River, great beers. Yeah, uh, but I think overall, still, um, you, we can't get it here yet. Hopefully, someday. Uh, is Odell's Mercenary. Mm, great beer. Mm-hmm. Really good beer. And it has a lot of the, citru- the, the citrus-type notes that you get from, from American hops. Uh, but not overwhelmingly uh, hoppy. You know, that, no. that beer was, was enjoyable to drink and consume. I didn't really find that it was offensive, you know, at all. Mm-hmm. So so I, I think I'll give Mercenary, uh, the Odell Mercenary, my, my favorite IPA that, wow. I've, that I've tried this year. Well, there you have it. Reverend Mark's uh, top IPA pick for 2013 is going to be Odell's Mercenary. All right, Jonathan, you've had plenty of IPAs as well. And so what was your choice or what was even some of your uh, short list picks as well? I was actually really hoping you were going to pass me up on this. Um, you know, I have... I like Coors Light. Yeah. I like yeah, a 12 not, not that bad. Not that bad. <laughs> Yeah, I just don't know. I, you know, I was hoping this would open this up to a discussion. Well, what, you guys your, should so tell your, me what I should top like. three? Yeah. Well, okay. Um, all right. Good old boy, Jim. You're going to have to help me out with the names. Okay. Because I mainly raid your top fridge. Three, I mean, what, I raid your IPAs? fridge. Top three IPAs, yeah. Oh, uh, well, see, I don't know that, that, that good old boy Jonathan has a top three IPA. He hmm. generally bypasses... I do. Well, did you have, it's, a, it's one I of my shortcomings. Him, it's like drinking flowers. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay. is, it is one of my shortcomings. Uh, <laughs> there have been a couple that I have rated from Good Boy Jim's fridge that were that were pretty good. Um, well, you had some a couple weeks ago. I don't know because apparently I will say this that my fridge has gotten lighter lighter <laughs> over the, since <laughs> Christmas break has <laughs> arrived. So. <laughs> Well, I've definitely, all of the various collections have dwindled. I know, and and I like the fact that my own beer cellar is, you know, I at least have room now, so I can, uh, you know, definitely uh, pack on a little bit more. And there, uh, it's becoming a space issue. So, but what you you don't have is is twenty two year old son with several twenty two year old friends. Uh, I'm sure that will come at some <laughs> point in time. Where all beer is good beer. So <laughs> just all, beer, all beer is good yeah. beer. Let's see. Uh, so, did you try the Adam Bond from Blackstone? Cause I, ha- I have had that. Yes. Oh, okay. So, was that maybe in your top five as well? That's a that's a really good beer. I'll give it. it you know, being one of the five that I've had, yeah, it'll be in the top five. Top five. That's a good choice. Let's see. Uh, I know some other things you've probably been exposed to were uh, some of the Lagunitas. Um, uh, beers. Um, so Lagunitas sucks or. Um, how about any of the Stone Enjoy by series, like the Stone Enjoy by ten 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 or uh, or ten eleven thirteen or any of that Stone uh, uh, Enjoy by series? Did you have any of those? I probably have, but 
I don't remember them. I don't think they were very memorable to me. All right, we're going to let you pick Adam Bomb. All right, we'll that's, that's, that's a really, right. that's a great choice. Well, uh, you know the uh, the previous segment uh, that aired right before this was uh, you know a couple of choices that uh, good old boy John and, and myself uh, picked as well, and you know the uh, uh, John's pick was uh, 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 was Hetty Topper from The Alchemist. Um, and mine was uh, Six Point Resin, uh, Six Point Brewery uh, Resin is the name of the beer. I mean, just phenomenal beer. Oh, my goodness. Um, good old boy Dave's was uh, Highlight from uh, Scar City. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good beer and uh, definitely one of uh, their their uh, his favorites as well. You like Highlight as well? No, I was Jonathan was trying to remember what he had rated out of my fridge that was in the IPA. Ah, and when you, you said go. Lagunitas, it reminded me that there were a couple of little something somethings. Oh, there you go. That's a good fridge. beer. Yeah. So was that it? The Lagunitas. That was, was what, what I, was, yeah, yeah, I, was, well. I would imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. We uh, we all enjoyed those. All of my friends as well. So thanks. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the things that uh, will be. Um, fascinating to watch uh, this next year is how you know IPAs will continue to evolve you know here in the marketplace um, and you know we've actually named a, a combination of uh, straight up IPAs double IPAs uh, imperial IPAs uh, you know even in this discussion and you know those lines are becoming incredibly blurred and it's not just the IBUs that are really contributing to a lot of confusion within this style. Um, I mean, where do you think the brewer is going to be going with IPAs over the next 12 months, Reverend Mark? Well, certainly one, one direction will be your barrel-aged uh, strong ales, which will include your imperial IPAs. Um, it'll just add another, you know, several notes of of a flavor and complexity to you know sort of the hop symphony so i, I see that as con- continuing that seems to be you know a tr- at least a trend for a while mm-hmm. well and if i had to pick the uh, the barrel aging agent uh, of choice i think for most of the brewers it's going to be bourbon but my feedback to them would be go for the rum um, I think most of the rum infused, uh, you know, um, barrel aged products that I had uh, were definitely the, the ones that I, I really are quite memorable uh, for me. Definitely the cognac one that I had from uh, Evil Twin, but those were not IPAs that have been aged as well. And I think that'll be probably an interesting twist is if you begin to bring aging characteristics around to. You know these very strong, uh, strong IBUs, and almost bringing a measure of some sweetness, and actually toning down some of the hot bomb, you know, principle within uh, the approach of the style. Right, and also with barrel aging, you can just stuff, you know, a lot of a lot of flavor, a lot of flavor in there uh, through what's called dry hopping, and that doesn't really uh, contribute any bittering. It's just all kind of floral. Yeah. So. Well, I enjoyed our discussion about our best IPA choices for 2013, and we'll look back on our conversation a year from now and uh, just see what 2014, you know, brought to the equation. I want to thank those of you uh, tuning in for this episode. You can always drop us a line here at Sips, Suds, and Smokes at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. You can catch up with us on Twitter at at sipsudsmoke. That's without an S. Uh, you can catch us uh, on Facebook as well, uh, one of the great places. Um, our daily tasting notes uh, go out on our Twitter feed as well. Their fine friends at Untapped uh, host quite a bit of our hosts, um, sending out daily tasting notes as well on Suds, as well as our Sips hosts also post their tasting notes on Twitter as well. For now, I want to thank you for joining us. This is good old boy Mike, and I'll let everybody say their adieus here. Good old boy Jim. Good afternoon. <laughs> good Cheers. <laughs> and Farewell. good old boy Jonathan. Farewell. Let's go to my mic. I'm going to ask you to keep on sipping. This has been a One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your hosts, the good old boys, will see you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.